welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. We're back again and we're just finishing off the last of our team of the year. At the moment now we're currently just finishing off with our wingers. This is going to be Hazy Wingers, team of the year. I've got Rob join me once again. How's things Rob? Nice Christmas, nice New Year. Yeah, not a bother. Looking forward to the new season kicking off now. Yeah, not far away, weeks. not far away. Friday uh, noise can come soon enough. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, it, obviously, when the league starts back up, we're going to have more videos on the regular as well. But uh, going forward from now, we're going to have, whether it be weekly news or transfers or something like that, we're going to have a weekly show talking about mainly everything that's gone on in the week. It'll generally be out on a Sunday or a Monday. We're yet to decide, but keep your eyes peeled for that. But uh, back to the situation at hand. Um, the two ways that I think were chosen were Kieran Sadler mm -hmm. and Michael Duffy. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's kind of hard to argue with them, but I want to give kind of our opinion on stuff because I know you're a big fan of Dan O'Kelly. Yeah. As a Rovers fan, which I have to say you're very, you're, you are very fair in terms of um, you're very neutral, and you, if a player's done well, you'll give them credit oh, for yeah, it. So, definitely, yeah. So um, if you're looking at it, would you have would you have an argument say that Dano should be in line? Now obviously the making of this video now Kieran's gone to, to Doncaster, Don made his extra debut now against Preston. Yeah. Um Dano Kelly's gone to Dundalk now yeah. based on the season just gone. And he was obviously linked with Bolton and I think Shaman yeah, yeah, yeah. and a couple of other teams. But what would be would he be someone that you'd be trying to fit in there? Yeah, no, definitely. I think um as I said, like, you know, I'm lucky where I live in Sandyford, like on a Friday for hours weren't playing in Tallow, I couldn't get to the away match to go out and watch Bray and for the first half of the season before everything fell apart there with there, like, you know. At the start now, to be honest, now we didn't make much of him, but then he's one of those players, like, you know, as the season went on, you know, when he got the games under his belt, you know, he just improved and leaps and bounds and I think the pinnacle for him was, you know, when they played Cork and Daly Mount when I think he shocker shot. for Delaney. Yeah. yeah, but like he, he tore them to shreds. He did coming in Bushy. on the right. Yeah, he, you know, like with pace, you know, was like you know, I think he scored twice and yeah. I think against Bray as well when ball was pace. His pace is frightening. Yeah, like and when they played Bray out there as well, I think he scored a couple of goals. So like the second half of the season, like you know, based on the second half of the season, I'd have him in there, but obviously he left the judge it over the entire season, so. You yeah. know, but like, Even though you didn't agree with the Graham Burke thing, but yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> but, you know, let's say you have to judge over the entire course of a season, you know, so based off that, then it'd be the two lads, Sadler and Duffy. Well, yeah, Daniel Kelly, in my opinion, put, like would have pushed him very close. Like, you know, he finished the season extremely strong, you know, scoring goals, important goals for bowls at that as well. You know, their end of season he was an form. integral part of their, you know, their, yeah. their end of season run. And, you know, arguably... They were the form team, maybe besides Dundalk and Rovers as well. Like, well I'm not just actually, being no, boys, no, 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 like, no, no, no. Yeah, Rovers were to be fair, because obviously they they were you know at the time trailing Waterford for that uh, ten spot. points, and they overhauled them. But and they got a lot of clean sheets, um, in in that space of time too. But like, Bowes were were playing teams out the park, the likes of Cork and stuff like that. I mean, they were blowing them out, blowing them out of the water essentially. Yeah, and, no, I remember watching that match myself now, like getting up back to Daniel Kelly. I was away in Germany for work, and I remember watching that on my laptop, and I was like, Jesus Christ, like, he's absolutely tearing them asunder. They just couldn't handle him in any way, shape, or form. Like, he's just like one of those players in a purple patch, and everything he did went right. And you know, he, you know, like, he looked, he looked apart anyway, like, more than comfortable at that level. And, I think it's worth pointing out up until this season. Like he never played League of Ireland. He was playing Leinster Senior League. Like so to make that step up to go and from well. Yeah, and Leinster Senior League to finishing off the season so strongly linked with championship clubs, then signing for Dundalk is mm. phenomenal, you know. So he came close to joining Bolton from reports say. I yeah, don't know the truth. I think it's something to do with fine it said something in the papers about finances or something. But you know, still they look like they're getting relegated anyway. Yeah, like you know, I think Dundalk is like the pinnacle for any player in the league at the minute. So to go from I think he was Pat C.Y. in Crumlin before he went to Bray. From that to Dundalk. Not sure his year. history. Um, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't no, know. no, I think that's where he started. He went Pat C.Y. He was at like either Crumlin, Pat C.Y., Bray, and then Dundalk in the space of a season. Yeah. And he would have joined Bray at a time, or sorry, he would have came from Bray at a time where Bray were in the turmoil and stuff like that. So confidence wouldn't have been high. So yeah. it was great that he came in. His confidence was sky high after a couple of games. And then, 
you know, he was a real fan's favourite down at Bowes, you know. He, oh, yeah, 100%. Because I said, look, I'd go to, before in other videos, I'd go to a couple of Bowes matches because a mate of mine, a shout out to Rob Donahue, is, um, he's a big Bowes fan and a season ticket holder. So, um, yeah, I'd say, I would go and watch Bowes with him. And, yeah, like, the fans really talked to, talk to him and, you know, he really seemed to buy into the club. And I think, like, you know, I don't know if it's inside information, but, like, him and his family would know people involved in Bowes and they were saying that, he wasn't going to sign for Rovers because of, you okay. know, he like well I don't know how true that is, but I was hearing rumours before he signed for Dundalk that he was nailed on to go to Rovers. So it'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah like, but like you know, you always like hear these stories come out, yeah, whether they're true or not. But yeah, no, they really like them. It's, you know, unfortunately, I think he was told that they offered him a deal to stay, but. No, just they're not in the situation. You can't really blame for not staying. I mean, they dropped off a lot of players have gone. Yeah. Uh, now Supo retired, and then other players have, have just left. JJ Loney. There's obviously a few more, a few more that, that have uh, gone off. And the, the only one who really of of kind of note from last season that kind of stayed on was Daryl Lee. He signed the contract, 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 and obviously yeah. the manager. But other than that, um, yeah. On top of my knowledge, no one springs to mind that makes me go oh. Yeah, he's like, yeah, still Keith Ward and Dinny Corker. Not yeah, but they, they, well, the younger kinda, players. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Of, of their, of their kind of, you know, their breakthrough from last season, which you, you know, if they had to kept that core group, they yeah. maybe it would have excelled or kicked on. But uh, t- speaking of the fact that Daniel Kelly's gone to the dock and now Dylan Connolly's moved from there mm. to AFC Wimbledon. Now I think Dylan Connolly's a very good player. You don't. No, I don't think he's. I'm not saying he's not a good player, but I just think, you know, I think sometimes, you know, he's a bit like, he's, like, he's lightning quick, like, you know, and I think sometimes he can, like, be overly reliant on that aspect of his game, whereas, like, say, comparing to, like, say, Daniel Kelly or Michael Duffy, like, they might not be as quick, but they have, I think, in my opinion, they have more strings to their bow, like, they're not, like, technically, they're probably a bit better, whereas, like, with friends I've seen, Dylan Connie, even, like, bef- disregarding last season, like, when he was at Bray, like, mate, like it gave Sean Gannon an awful night one night out there against them dock, like you know, tore him to shreds and think Gannon got sent off. Like so when he's on his on his game, like he's a smashing player. But yeah. I think even just reading comments on Twitter from Dundalk fans, they even kind of were like it didn't work out for him or he's a bit too hit and miss for them up in Dundalk. Like you know, yeah. I think he just it's blows just hot the game, and cold. Games and... games I watched and he really stretched teams, and they were uh, like it was, it was a position that they were never really, never really had nailed down last year. Um, the right wing, like you yeah. had Mount Mountney down yeah, playing out, 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 out there as well. So I think I do say what you're saying. Like he's he's one of them kind of like kind of. I suppose he kind of reminds me of Stephen Holmes in a way. It's just head down, run with the ball, use your speed. I, th- I see what I see what you're saying, but I thought he had a little bit more to his game. At, and you know I'm delighted for him. I'm delighted he's got his move, and you know hopefully it works out. Hopefully, he does get the you know the required coach, and it brings more to his game, becomes more technical, and uh, who knows he might go up the leagues with them. Ah yeah, I'd like to say I always like to see fellas leave and go on and kick on like, especially Irish lad. Yeah, like I say he's not, but like you say he's not a bad player. But I just think, you know, if he wants to, like just in my opinion anyway, just sometimes like he's. It'd be easy to play against if you're the opposition player. Like, you know, as I said, if he's on his game, like he can roast any fullback. But I think for Dundalk and the way they play, look, I, I just don't think he really fit their system too well. And yeah. That's just it's a fair opinion. comment. It's a fair my comment. opinion anyway. It's a fair comment. Um, but uh, see, in my opinion, there's not that many wingers that were, you know, going stand out. I mean, I know you'd probably have Carl Shepherd on the shortest. Um, not for me. I just think you know he's not one of those you know um he's not like a Michael Duffy who's gonna like maybe beat two or three players and score a world. He, I think, I think he's just he's more of a pardon the comparisons to the Premier League, like a Dirk Kite style winger, whereas you know he's like puts a shift in down the right, he'll chip in with important goals throughout the season, which I think he does consistently for Cork. Why is the opposition fans? Hmm? Wines opposition fans. Of. Yeah, like you need players like that as well. Like I think they add yeah, a bit of spice course. to yeah, it. Yeah, of course. But yeah, I think he's. If I was a professional player, I'd be like that. No, I think he's solid. Like I think he's a decent Back player. Like, <laughs> you know, he's solid if not spectacular. You know, yeah. and he chips in with goals. Like you know, he's consistent. Yeah, I see. I see. I see what you're saying, but I just you know, um, I'm looking at Sadler, and that was a player who was impacting games. Regard, like even if he was 
not getting a look in. Do you know what I mean? There was times during that season where he was coming on affecting games, whether it was assists or whatever. I thought more so affecting the game than, than Shepard, in my opinion. But, um, I know, yeah, that's why he's in the team of the season. Like, you know, for the way he imp- like, what, 17 league goals, wasn't it? 15, I think he finished on 26 or 28 goals in total, uh, if you're counting everything. But in the league, I think it was 15, 17 goals, 15. I'm not sure. But like it was very time. high for a winger. Sure, like. I should have checked that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but yeah, there's another honourable yeah. mention. Now, we're talking me. about honourable mentions who's gone on to really, really kick on now. He Obviously, Derry, Derry boy, um, Ronan Curtis. Mm. He's been absolutely fantastic. Um, for parts, man. Yeah, but he was—he was—he was, he was very good at Derry too, and you know, Ireland under twenty ones, he was brilliant mm. as well. Um, he's gone yeah. out, He seems to have gone a kind of more of a kind of striker role at Portsmouth, but I know watching him at Derry and at Ireland under twenty ones, he seems to kind of be like kind of left winger cutting in and scoring. But he seems to pick up the ball a lot, even for Portsmouth in that position and run at teams. Yeah, I really like him in terms of he just. Ireland themselves don't have a lot of players that can run with the ball and score goals. Like dribble with the ball, you probably say Sean McGuire and Curtis. And other than that, maybe you kind of look Cam around. Robinson, maybe. Yeah, but he doesn't do it enough for me, in my opinion. Like Curtis, is, I know it's League One, he's doing it week in week out. And then at Derry, obviously, were really warranted his move. But I thought I I watched him more so in detail at Ireland under twenty one games, and I thought he was brilliant. Yeah, no, it's sad. Look, again, on the whole, like, it might have to be here a full season to warrant the place in the team. But yeah, as I said, like, his form at Derry got him to move over to Ports. But, and even, was it last season, a club in Sweden that ended up playing Arsenal in the Europa League, tried to sign him, I think? Not sure. I think I'm pretty sure I remember they like, put a bid in, but he decided to stay at Derry and it's paid off for him. You know, he had a good start to the season with them, got his move to Ports, but now he's hacking up over there. Like, so he'd be another... Honourable mention for the winger position if he was yeah here for the full season you never know he could have pushed the two lads mm. well like maybe not Michael Duffy because I think he's the outstanding player in the league for me anyway mm. this season well if we're gonna we might as well kind of cut to the chase and and you know I think I don't think we really look past Michael Duffy he's had a fabulous season chipped him with goals assists I don't think Pat Huben would have gotten nowhere near as many goals had he not been playing as well mm. you know. Uh, Despite, you know, you kind of look at how far he's came, he nearly got called up. The only diff- uh, difficulty was the uh, international clearance. Yeah, I think so, that didn't come true in time for him yeah, to get called up. But I think he would have got the call up. And, you know, why well, is his there? Because he sees, like, players like Graham Burke and stuff like that in there. And on merit as well. But um, if you're calling Graham Burke in, in my opinion, you have to be calling Huben and you have to be calling him uh, Tuffy as well. But I'm not the, or the manager, clearly. Um but, I mean, I remember like there was, he was on fire at uh, like I know for the majority of the season he was brilliant, but there was a period where he was just unplayable, and teams were just afraid of their lives, of him, you know. And you know, obviously Patrick McElhenney coming in there and adding to the squad, obviously upped his game as well. I know he's not playing the same position, but for me. Having all those players, your Duffy's, your, you know, Connolly, in my opinion, I know, I know you won't say that, but you have all those Bensons and stuff like that, and you just add something like Duffy in, into the mix. It's, it's unbelievable. I remember even that goal, I think, was it Huben who, who, who crossed it in? It was, and he smashed it. was a European game. Yeah, it was left like the Van Basten esque. Yes, yeah, it was brilliant. But I, I just, I loved watching Dundalk this season, and mainly down to that guy. Yeah, no, he's just, he's a, he's like saying, a Rolls Royce style of a footballer, isn't he? He's just, he's like in a way, like, probably the closest thing the league's had to Paddy McCord and his pomp, like, before he, like, moved to Celtic yeah. a few years ago in terms of, like, you nearly paint just to go in and watch him play, like, it's, yeah, it's just fabulous to watch him, in my opinion, you know, close control, he can dribble, beat a man, score a cracker, set up goals, he's always a threat as well, like, yeah. you know, there's never a game where he, he doesn't. I've seen him like play against Rose, and isn't I can't say he's never like had a quiet game. Like he's always one moment in the match where like if you switch off against him, like yeah. he's gonna hurt. You know, whether it's an assist or a goal. Yeah, like and yeah, I think I think it's I think you have to say the same about Sadler too. You know, there was parts of the season where he was left in, left out. You know, 
I was speaking to a person, he was saying that, you know, Martin O'Neill had got in contact and wanted to call him up, and that was before the uh, the, the mid-season break, <clears throat> and uh, they were due to play Dundalk, and for some reason was dropped by the manager. So, you know, another player who was tipped for a call-up, so, I mean, I think for that, that on, on either side, but, I mean, another player who, who, who has everything, I mean, he takes free kicks, penalties, corners, scores with his head, scores long-range goals, scores goals in the box, you know, I, I in my opinion, I think this Doncaster move for him is, is going to be a good one. Yeah, definitely, <clears throat> even, yeah, he's a player for the big game as well, I know, the, I know they lost the cup final, but, you know, stepping up to take a pen on front of the Dundalk fans and the Aviv and, like slots of home calmly enough, you know. So yeah, I'd agree with you. He's like capable of producing that with the like Michael Duffy, the world he's as well as yes. you know, setting up and creating goals. And yeah, he seems to have the right mentality to want to succeed now as well. So Yeah. Um so I think that's safe to say that our left and right wingers then you'd have Sad there on the right and Duffy on the left. Duffy on the left. I think, yeah. I think that's that's fair enough. If you disagree with us, let us know in the comments. Um don't forget to check out our sponsors, Half Week Cab. Uh, they've launched an app, so make sure you go and download The link is in the bio. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button now. And if you never want to miss a video, click the bell for alerts. For all our other social media platforms, check out this list below. And as always, thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV.